Howdy y'all! Welcome to the Booth Western Art Museum's Facebook page and my home studio. My name is Lynette. I am the Education Outreach Coordinator at the Booth Western Art Museum and I'm so excited that we are doing another live video today. Another live art lesson. So today we're going to draw something that some of you may not be, that some of us may not be familiar with, especially me living on uh, the East Coast. Um, but uh, a lot of us are spending uh, time in our homes. Maybe you live in a big two-story house. Maybe you live in a townhouse like I do or an apartment or a one-story house. We're going to be drawing a style of house uh, that you find more in the southwestern region of America that is um, has a long tradition in um, American Indian cultures. We are going to be drawing a Pueblo today. So Pueblo is a Spanish word for town or village or like a nation of people um but it is a style of home that dates back i mean centuries <laughs> it is like one of the i would say one of the oldest forms or architectural structures of houses that you find in america which is really cool um so we are going to be drawing a pueblo today uh some quick reminders you don't need anything fancy um i drew mine with like markers and crayons but if all that you have is a pencil and a piece of paper, that's all you're going to need. Uh, another thing is that yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine does. I'm probably going to draw mine maybe not as differently as I normally do in my videos. <laughs> I might stick a little bit closer to this, but I still want to try out some new colors. I want to experiment and take some risks. So again, I might just, I'm, I will probably draw mine even differently than this. So yours can be different than mine too. Um, and also that this is, uh, this practice or this drawing lesson is for fun. It's for practice. It's to tune our for artistic skills and, um, just, you know, practicing, uh, every week a little bit will, um, it'll strengthen your, your artistry. So without further ado, I'm going to flip my camera around and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Playboys before we begin, just so we're all kind of on the same page. So you're going to get a nice view of my ceiling while I turn my camera around. Here we go. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's nice and lined up before we jump in. Oop. That looks good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So I'm going to start out just by showing you on the map kind of where you find Pueblos in uh, the United States. So again, we're kind of over here a little bit north of Atlanta if you live in Cartersville near the booth um, or in Georgia. And you find Pueblos kind of in the southwestern region of the United States. It kind of spans um, New Mexico, Arizona, this even Texas and Colorado area. It wasn't used by just one American Indian tribe. There were uh, a lot of them in this area that used the style of house. Some that you might recognize are the Tiwa, the Zuni, or the Hopi, but that's just a few because Pueblos were really good for this environment of the United States. They were built um, to help them survive and endure the harsh environment. So on this map, you can tell by um, this kind of tan color that this is a desert area, that it can get very hot in the daytime and cold at night. And Pueblos were built kind of like caves. So the, ha the individual rooms and houses would keep you cool, during the day and then warm during the night. Now Pueblos were made out of adobe bricks. So adobe is a mixture of mud and straw and water. And then you would bake it in the sun to make all of these different bricks that you would construct into. This is almost similar to like an apartment style housing. So each of these little doors is its own um, house, which is like one or two rooms. Um, so there's an artist in the museum that has painted artwork with Pueblos in it that I was inspired by his artwork to create today's lesson. Um, his name is Logan Maxwell Hajedge, and he is from Los Angeles, uh, California, or that's where um, he works. And he was inspired to create art um, by visiting his grandmother who lived in the California desert. And his artwork is described as um, stylized realism, which just means that there's elements of his artwork that look realistic, like the faces and the folds and the clothing, but there's some elements that are stylized, that are a little bit more abstract, like the shapes 
in these pueblos are very geometric, kind of the lines and angles and edges of his artwork. So I, I just think his artwork is so interesting and neat, and I love the shapes of the pueblos in his artwork, which is what I'm going to kind of imitate in my own that we draw today. So without further ado, <laughs> let us begin. So I've got my piece of paper. I'm going to get my example over here so we can kind of look at a few things at once while we're drawing. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So I've got my pencil. I've got a sharpener just in case and an eraser, which is what I'm going to start with. So for your Pueblo, I would first start out by creating the ground that your uh, building is going to sit on. Basically, we're going to start with the foundation and then work our way up. So I did mine at kind of a diagonal, um, just because I thought that made the artwork look interesting to have it kind of at an angle like this. But you can also um, create very straight lines here. Let me pull this painting back up. So in this one, you can see that there are more horizontal and vertical lines. So if you want yours to look more like this, I might draw just a straight line at the bottom for your ground. But I really like this one because uh, I just think like this shape is very interesting, which you can kind of see in my own artwork here. I just think the, the different diagonals make it look really interesting. Also, one thing I will talk about in a bit, but if you, this is a... a picture of a Pueblo in Taos, New Mexico. If you kind of look, you can see the shape here and the shape here. And this painting is called Taos Profile. So I would say he was probably painting this very Pueblo for the painting, which is cool. <laughs> okay, so enough talking about the art. Let's do the art. So I'm going to draw kind of like what I did before. I'm going to draw a diagonal line at the bottom. And then I am going to draw um, the different um, small areas of the house. There's lots of these little, it's basically squares or rectangles on top of squares and rectangles. Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start by just making one. I'm going to start with one right here. So I'm going to do a vertical line that goes up. Then I'm going to do another vertical line that goes up. I actually think I want to make it, no, this is a good height. And then I'm going to make a diagonal line that's in the same direction as the ground as the bottom. And then one thing that you should do whenever you're drawing, so I've drawn a box, and one thing that you're going to want to do is to round your edges of your corners. Because Pueblos aren't, um, they're geometrical in shape, but they're not, absolutely perfect straight lines and a lot of the edges of playable is like the corners are rounded so if you curved it it gives it that rounded shape now a lot of the times the playables were built right next to each other so I'm gonna build I'm gonna build <laughs> build through drawing another one right here and I'm gonna let it go off of the page so there we go so now there's my first layer and you can decide how many layers um, you want your Pueblo to be, but I'm going to draw um, a second layer up here. So I'm going to start by drawing a straight up and down line here. And then I think I'm going to end it right here. And then I'm going to draw the top, the diagonal line, and then curve my edges. Now, from a lot of the pictures that I've seen, um, I don't think you need to be, a lot of times... Um, the Pueblos, they, they kind of sit on top of each other in different ways, so it doesn't have to be perfect, like, okay, this box needs to sit directly on top of this one, and this one directly on top of this one. They can be kind of off-kilter or, um, a little bit uneven, because that's how they naturally look. So I'm going to draw one more here. That just kind of goes off the page. And I think for this one, I'm just going to draw, this one I did one, two... And this is kind of three, four layers. I think I'm just going to stick with three on this one to keep it a little bit, maybe make it a little bit shorter this time. So actually here, let's keep going. I'm going to make it here. Erase that. And then I'm actually going to not let this top one go off the page. Well, maybe I'll let the shadow go off the page. 
make it look kind of like a cube or a box. There we go. Okay, so this looks good to me. I like these outlines that I've made. Um, and I'm going to now draw some of the other outlines that are important, like these mountains in the background, if you want to add some clouds. Um, I think that's a good thing to add here. So I'm going to draw, I'm actually going to draw, I'm going to draw my mountain really tall up in this corner so that it kind of mimics the building. I'm going to change that up from my other drawing. And then I'm going to draw a cloud over here. I'm going to make it very big. <laughs> a big billowy cloud. It's been rainy where I've been for a couple of days, so maybe it's a rain cloud. I don't know. Just thinking about clouds. All right. That looks good. Doesn't have to be perfect. So this is a good, we've gotten all of the the uh, important outlines of our drawing drawn. Uh, so now we can go in and start adding details. You'll probably want to add some doors onto your buildings. I actually read that for some pueblos, the um, entry into your house would actually be on in the ceiling. So it would just kind of be like a, I think now we think of like a sky window but just a hole in the ceiling of the house. And then you could use a, a ladder to climb in and out of, which is harder to get in and out of your house, but it also is another layer of protection. Makes it harder to get in and out of other people to get out of your house. Um, but I think once uh, people started having doors on their houses like this, they kind of adapted. All right, so we've got... Sorry, I'm looking at my other drawings. It looks like on if you get to the third level, there are also um, doors on the top. So I'm going to put a door on this one. And then you'll want to add some windows. So just some smaller rectangles. And you don't have to, if you wanted to, you could add more windows than I'm adding. Or you could add less. I think I'm going to skip a window on this house and just add one on the bottom. I don't want it to look too planned out. I actually want to make it look a little bit random. Okay, so now that you've got these, a lot of Pueblos will have um, kind of these marks at the top, um, which are basically, so, so I'll kind of add them along the top edges of um, some of my buildings. Um, and adding these, so a lot of times, here on, I have it in my notes. I want to make sure I get the name right if I'd written it down. Let's see. Oh, so they were, so they're large logs. They were called vigas, um, which supported the roofs and had layers of branches, grass, mud, and plaster covering them. And they would get them from the mountains that were nearby to the pueblos. So they would use the adobe bricks um, to create the walls of the house. And I'm sure they would use some in the roofing, but they would need that, yeah, that wood or structural integrity to make sure that it didn't collapse when you added other layers on top of it. There we go. I'm just going to add all of these. So shape is really important in our lesson today looking at what kind of shapes we've done. We've done lots of geometric shapes, but then also adding some of those organic lines in here um, just to make it look interesting. So, looks good. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Um, if you wanted to add other things, maybe I'll add some birds flying in the sky over here. Uh, maybe I want to add, ooh, I'm trying to think of like, I had a snake down here. <laughs> That'd be kind of dangerous. There's people in the houses, but maybe it's a nice snake. There we go. A little snake. Just a little curved line. A little nose. There we go. And also, one thing too is uh, you could add even some borders to the um, 
to the houses. I'll just do it on this first one because then your eye will kind of be drawn to these first before you look at the other things. Makes it more of a focal point. Actually, I could make it, let's go down here and put a border around this one because then your eye will be drawn to the snake and this house. It'll kind of just pull you to this corner of the painting. Painting, excuse me, drawing. <laughs> you could be painting though. Okay, so I've got all the important lines of my artwork done. So now I can, uh, I'm actually gonna outline mine because, oh, actually I can leave this here. Um, but I wanted to show y'all a trick because a lot of the time on my artwork, I like to do an outline just because it makes the artwork um, pop a little bit more. Um, it makes things stand out. Um, and a lot of times I've just used um, a black Sharpie to outline my drawings. But I thought for this one, I would show y'all that you can use other materials to outline. So on this one, I'll do the same thing here. Hmm, do I have any other marker colors though that I could use? Um... No, I like these best. So you can actually outline in other colors besides black. So today I'm going to use blue and purple and um, brown to outline um, the important lines in my, uh, my drawing. Actually, here. Where is... I'm looking at what other... Let me show you my toolbox really quick so you can see what I'm looking at. I was looking at other marker colors that I could outline with. I've got red. I've got green and orange maybe orange I'll get these over here I'm probably gonna color mine with crayons um I was just thinking I think I'm gonna use orange and red because I want to outline the house like in this one I did kind of the blue door so I think this one I'm gonna do orange first get out of here pink <laughs> I'll need you right now I'm going to outline in orange. There we go. And then I can make my snake orange. There we go. This will be good because it's, I want to use crayons, but it's a little bit harder to be precise with crayons. So going in with marker first, make that easier and give it a little... Red pill. There we go. Very nice. Actually, here, let's do just a red outline on the door. So then we're using the colors of the snake in the door. It helps us be consistent in our drawing. There we go. All right. So now, there we go. So now I've got that. So now I'm going to start outlining some of the other areas of the drawing. There we go. And then I'm going to kind of read off some of the facts that I had. Some interesting things about Pueblos. So, with specifically, though, to start with, talking about Logan Maxwell, a judge's art, um, I found this quote online that I really liked, where they said that, The American Southwest comes to life in a judge's angular images that capture the sparse beauty of an arid landscape and of an ancient and enduring Native American tradition shaped by the extremes of its environment. So, like I was saying with um, Pueblos, they were great for the environment, so that's why several American Indian cultures uh, built Pueblos as homes, because they were just good for the area that they lived in. Um, now, Pueblos, uh, they shared, so like, um, they're similar to like apartments because they would share walls, so like this house shares this wall with this house um and each house um had a few rooms here hold on let me focus on my drawing here <laughs> um but the walls were usually really thick i read that some walls could be several feet thick which is crazy <laughs> um and uh, the outside so they were made out of adobe bricks which i mentioned was the mix of um mud and water and straw and uh you know over time if it if it rains or wind kind of bats at the outside and it starts to wear down eventually um they would actually kind of replaster with wood or not wood excuse me with mud over time so they would uh, take mud and kind of 
go over all of the outside surfaces um, to give it an extra layer so that it wasn't just continually worn down, that it eventually would get thicker and build back up. All right, we're making our way. <laughs> uh, so normally it had two rooms, and so there would be kind of the living sleeping area, and then there would be an area that you would use for either cooking or storage um, and eating. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Let me keep going here. So I mentioned earlier um, that this portrait by Logan Maxwell Hajedge was um, called Taos Profile, um, and I mentioned that there is a very famous Pueblo in Taos, New Mexico. Um, it is actually the oldest continuously inhabited community um, in the United States, which means that uh, people have been living in those Pueblos for over a thousand years, which is crazy. So, I mean, if you think about your house, a lot of houses you know, maybe your house was built last year, or maybe your house is like, it could be a hundred or over a hundred years ago. Um, but there are very few houses that have been around for thousands of years. So not only have these houses been, along, been here for a long time, but people have been living in them for that long, which is amazing. So there's a lot of history and culture in these places. And it is a UNICEFCO World uh, Heritage Site as of um, 1992. And actually, there's lots of artwork of the uh, Pueblo and the people in Taos, New Mexico, because some artists went out west and actually kind of discovered the community. Uh, they didn't actually discover it, but there was just a few artists who really were taken by it, and they formed their own little society um, called the uh, Tau Society of Artists, and they formed a group in 1915. So this was a long time ago. Uh, but they painted the people and the playbills of the houses that were lived there. And I actually read online that um, this, I think it's, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Did I write it on the, on the back? I did not. But one of the Pueblos in Taos is uh, speculated to be, um, one of the most photographed or painted buildings in North America, which is crazy. <laughs> it's actually uh, one of the largest multi-storied Pueblo structures that uh, is still around. A lot of them, you know, a lot of them, maybe they left and it started to wear down or they didn't upkeep with it. But this is one of the ones that has been around for the longest period of time. But we actually have, if you go online to the booth's website, there's an exhibition that we have up right now called New Beginnings, and it's actually artwork um, of artists that they've made artwork based in Taos, New Mexico. And it's a virtual exhibition, so it's one of those 360 ones with the, with the all-around cameras. You can look up, down, side to side, and uh, look at the paintings and the labels like they would be in the museum. So. That's a really awesome exhibition if you want to check that out. Okay, so it looks like I've got all of my outlines done. And if you wanted to, um, you could even uh, last, I don't know, I think, yeah, yeah, last week I talked about mark making, which ooh, I've got my sheet over here. So if you want to add any other interesting lines into your artwork, you know, you can stipple, which is just kind of going, uh, doing lots of little dots in your artwork, cross hatching. Um, there's lots of different options. Got to kind of hurry up a little bit here. <laughs> but if you wanted to, you can do some stippling dots with your brown. Just because these, uh, the Pueblos are, they're not super smooth. It is made out of mud and bricks, so it's got a little texture in there. Actually, I had one more thing I wanted to uh, to talk about as far as the coloring goes, so I'll make sure I mention that before I skedaddle for the day. So, when you're drawing like a pueblo, because if you look at these all of these paintings of pueblos, they're very um, tan and reddish brown, um, 
and they're all kind of the same color. You would think it's all the same brown, but you could actually layer with brown with other colors to create um, a more interesting hue or tints and shades of a color. So let me just get, I've got kind of a nice tan brown here. So let's say I start coloring this area over here. So I'm gonna do just a nice even layer all over this part and I'm gonna go around the door and the window. Here we go. Perfect, and it's not absolutely perfect and that's okay, but let's say I wanted to make this look a little bit warmer so I could grab um, some of my warmer colors. Let me bring this over here so you can see. Um, I can use some of my warmer colors like an, an orange. And you can see by just layering a different color over, it already makes that tan look different. You can even use, if you have a darker brown, you can go on the bottom and add a little bit of that dark brown to the bottom of your, um, this a little section of the Pueblo, and it'll give it more, it'll give it depth. Here, let's try some yellow in here too. Ooh, that looks nice. There you go. So you can add some warm colors like orange or yellow. You could even add some red to kind of make it look brighter. But let's say over here, I've got a little bit of shadow um, on my building over here. So let's say, here, let's go over with this tan. And then I'll go over with this brown. But another way you can add a color to your shadows is by using cool colors. So you could use purple or blue or even a green. Um, I'm gonna go in with blue actually. And this is actually a technique a lot of artists use. There's some artists who say that you shouldn't use pure black in shadows because shadows are actually more of a gray and they actually will have color in it. So there you go. So you can add that and then you can go back on top with the tan. There you go, and it gives it a little bit uh, more of an interesting color to your uh, to your drawing. Because a lot of us, if all you have is crayons and you're worried that you don't have as many colors as I have, you can mix and layer colors on top to create your own colors and to create interesting hues. Um, so, there you have it. Um, I think I need to go ahead and wrap up for today and I will finish my drawing off camera and then I'll show you guys what it looks like in about an hour. It doesn't take me too long. <laughs> uh, but one thing you'll want to do for sure on your drawing is write your name on it. Um, so you can uh, write it anywhere on your drawing. You could put it at the bottom. You could hide it. I think I actually want to write my name. I'm going to take this purple marker. I'm going to actually write it in the middle. What? <laughs> in the middle of your drawing. But uh, if I go over it, here, I'll do this really quickly. If I go over it with like a purple, like this, it'll kind of hide it in there so it doesn't look quite, you'll still be able to see it, but it's almost like camouflaged in with the rest of my drawing, like that. There you go. So there's lots of different, so whenever you're doing your Pueblo, uh, your Pueblo, <laughs> excuse me, uh, you can get creative with your drawing. Uh, there are other artworks from our museum that I didn't quite have time to mention, um, but these are different examples of different ways that you can draw Pueblos if you wanted to add a person in the front. This one, it's more faded in the background, but this one you can see is much more orange in the background and has more of those warm colors in the yellows. Um, so you can get creative with your colors and experiment. Um, and I'm actually uh, now gonna flip around my camera really quick so you're gonna get a good view of my ceiling. All right, and I have something really cool I wanna show, <laughs> I have something really cool I wanna show y'all before I go. So one of uh, the reasons also that I wanted to use um, Logan Maxwell Hedge's work is because he's let us use and has given us uh, He's uh, given us the files, the use of some of his coloring pages that he has made. Um, so here, I've got one right here. So these are really cool. The line work is incredible, and it gives you an idea 
of some of his other work. This is some I just printed on some uh, cardstock at my house, but these are available if you go to the Booth Western Art Museum's website and you go to the, there's a learn tab, and then there's a family, um, kids and family section, and these are all under that, um, that page. So you can download these and color them yourself, and I would love to see if you use these, they're very beautiful. Um, so I'd love to see your renditions of um, these coloring pages. I'd also love to see your Pueblos if you drew along with me, which if you uh, use our hashtag Booth Museum and use it on any of your social media, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you can also reply your photo in the comments or send it to us. How, whatever's easier for you, we will see it. <laughs> and I would, it's so fun to see everyone's interpretations of the same artwork. Um, if you, Sorry, organizing my notes. <laughs> if you are interested in um, getting more information from the museum, I would highly recommend signing up for our um, booth email updates. They'll give you current news of what's going on in the museum and there are other family um, recommendations of things that you can do. Um, we've been recommending some different books and so this week we recommended um, uh, for ages three to seven, Arrow to the Sun, a Pueblo Indian tale by Gerald McDermott. And then for ages eight to 12 years old, we uh, recommended the National Geographic Kids Encyclopedia of American Indian History and Cultures. Uh, and that one um, is by Cynthia O'Brien. And then for adults, um, a book uh, is called A River Apart, the Pottery of Cochiti and Santa de Dominito Pueblos, excuse me, <laughs> and that's by um, Valerie K. Vercuse. So those are just some book recommendations if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about Pueblos, but we send those out every week and they always have really fun information in them. So if you're wanting to stay connected, I would highly recommend it. Now, I will be here again next week, uh, May 26th on Tuesday, same time, 1045, same place the Booth Western Art Museum's Facebook page if you want to watch it live. Uh, and it's time for me to skedaddle, but this has been wonderful. And thank you so much again for joining me and the Booth Western Art Museum as we work to share America's story. Y'all have a great day. Bye.